Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, awesome. Well, welcome to everybody uh, to our first speaker hangout for Le Web Paris, which is coming up December 4th, 5th, and 6th. Uh, if you didn't tune in for our London event, we, uh, we love to do these hangouts with a lot of our amazing speakers to give you an opportunity to connect with them, ask them questions, um, and start to get involved in the community way before you even have to make your way to the event in Paris. Um, so we're very excited today to have Cedric Hutching, Hutchings, uh, who's the CEO of Withings. Um, he's uh, really been building a lot of things. So our, our theme is Internet of Things at uh, Le Web Paris. And if there's one person who knows a lot about uh, the Internet of Things, did you, did you coin that term? Or I know, I know you're, you're at the forefront of, uh, of the Internet of Things and really pushing the boundaries on how uh, you can connect the internet with devices. Um, so that's my, that's my intro, but I'm sure you can do a better job. Uh, why don't you take a second to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit more about WeThings. Sure, so thanks, uh, thanks a lot, David, and thanks for uh, all the viewers who are watching us. I'm uh, Sarah Kachins, co-founder of uh, WeThings. So we say WeThings, WeThings, uh, here in France. A uh, French company we created uh, along with uh, Eric Carrel in, uh, back in 2008. And Actually, so we are doing things, and uh, all of our things are connected. So I think we are right on spot for uh, this session uh, of the web, and we are very happy to, to participate. So in two words, what, what we are doing at uh, Things is uh, we develop uh, apps and products that help people take care about uh, themselves, so their health and their wellness and well-being. Uh, so we started with a Wi-Fi body scale back in 2009, added a smart blood pressure monitor, a baby monitor. So basically, we are uh, extending a range of health sensors, device that will sit at your home. Looks like uh, any kind of you know everyday, uh, very simple to use uh, object. But all of our products are generating data, health information that uh, we make sure to uh, convey, render in a proper manner, be it in a graph in your pocket or shared with a coach or with your community to make all this information and at the end of the day all the device very useful for you to take action and take charge of your health and well-being. So that's uh, in two sentences uh, what we're doing. Uh, so again, all our devices are connected, uh, are linked uh, to the internet, uh, not because we, we love the words, you know, internet of things, but because we think that it's a, a way just to make them more useful. Um, and I, I have to say, Cedric, that you launched the Why, why Things uh, scale at, uh, at Le Web. What is it, two, three years ago, two or three years ago? 2009, so we were very happy to be uh, uh, showcased and uh, introduced by, uh, by you at, uh, at Le Web in 2009, yes. Three years ago. So it's been uh, nearly three years that I used this thing to weigh myself. And it gives you a, it gives you a very cool graph. Uh, I, I don't know if I can add a picture uh, in there, but I'll, I'll try whatever. But you can show you a graph of your uh, um, uh, weight. And uh, it's very useful to have it online for so long because now I know exactly when I risk to get fat, uh, which is generally for me and probably most people summer and uh, winter. Uh, one thing I, I stopped doing though is uh, uh, to um, tweet my weight because no one gives a damn. <laughs> but it's a very cool, uh, a very very cool device. Yeah, thank you. I mean, we believe that uh, you know the graphs and this feedback loop is inspiring and is calling for for actions. So it's uh, a long way from you know the snapshot you get from time to time if you step on the scale and you have a variation from uh, the day before, but you forgot the one of uh, you know, last week. So it's a long way you know, from this experience of the scale. It's going to uh, a graph and a long, a long trend monitoring and starting to you know, get into actions. So not a, it's not about taking some big uh, resolution, New Year's and uh, you know, resolution that you drop at the end of the month, but it's to have this kind of uh, coach, personal coach or garden angel that will keep you on track because uh, it does not lie to you. Uh, it, uh, it really show you in just uh, one eye blink, you know, any kind of yo-yo effect or, or trends. And we believe it's a very uh, impactful uh, coach. Yeah, it is. And for those of you watching, David just uh, told me that 30 people are with us right now. You can actually join the Hangout. Um, and you can comment on YouTube if you don't know how to do that. And, and David will try to help, or, or I, but he's the admin. 
then you can ask questions directly to Cedric. Um, Cedric, one more. So you, 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 yes, David. David, you're muted. You I don't know. have a mic. That uh, yeah. No, yeah. Hey, sorry. Um, I was just going to say you can also ask any questions on our actual Google Plus page. Um, there will be a stream if you go to uh, plus.google.com/slash/theweb, and uh, you'll see the hangout there, and you can comment right there as well. And so we'll field questions from all of you, and we we have some uh, new people in the actual hangout. Uh, that we'll be fielding questions yeah. from as well. Um, <clears throat> if you actually join the Hangout, Miguel, welcome. Uh, please just mute yourself while other people are talking, and then feel free to just chime in and ask questions whenever you want. Um, OK. Uh, I have another question. Oh, someone joined. Hi. Who are you? We don't see you very well because you have a backlight on your window behind you, but um, hi. This is a secret person that doesn't want to show up. OK. All right. Um, Cedric, I have one more. You've, you've created um, new objects since the, uh, the Y thing scale. You've created a... Uh, uh, can you explain what, what, what are our new objects you, you launched? I think there are two of them, right? Yes, sure. So um, after the, the, the Wi-Fi body scale, we've launched a, a blood pressure monitor that works on the, on the same principle. So it's this device. I like to show it because it does not look like your regular blood pressure monitor, and it's part of our story. We believe that you know all these health sensors uh, will be around us and needs to be you know attractive and friendly uh, device, and not uh, again not a piece of hospital that reminds you that you need to take care of yourself because you're sick, etc. It's nice looking device that will sit around your uh, around you and that you will use from time to time to generate this, uh, this uh, useful data. So this second device is a blood pressure monitor. So you just wrap it uh, ar around your arm. Uh, so I'll not do it. It will be a, a bit long here. Plug it on your smartphone. And boom, like just plug it, it turns your iPhone or uh, Android into um, uh, the screen of your blood pressure monitor. You take your measurement. And the rest is fully automatic. And I'll take a few words to explain the rest. The rest is logging the information, giving some context. So was it a morning or evening value? Uh, sometimes do I average this measurement? And can I share it with the doctor that is uh, uh, monitoring over my health or uh, giving me some uh, prescription from uh, hypertension? All that is done automatically. Uh, and just by just taking the measurement, you will be able to share this uh, monitoring and have a, a better uh, link with your, with your doctor. Uh, it makes a lot of sense because taking your blood pressure in front of your doctor uh, is uh, almost useless. Uh, because first, it's something that fluctuates a lot. So why just take a measure once every six months? It will not be representative of your, your health. And second is that when you're in front of your doctor, and a lot of people experience that, you might be stressed. You're in front of a white jacket. You are either at the hospital or in the doctor premises. And you might be uh, stressed in a specific level of uh, blood pressure. So it's not the right time for your doctor to uh, either prescribe some exercise or diets or some, uh, some medications. So the best is to take the measurement at home from time to time and share this information and this flow of information over the long term. Uh, the bad news was it, that it's a kind of burden to, uh, to make this, again, logging, sharing the information. The good thing is that we believe that it's fully automated by devices such as a, a Wising blood pressure monitor. So all these data are shared in the same application and go along with, uh, with the body scale. So that's the second device we put on the market. But, but Cedric, is it like, I, so as much as I understood immediately why uh, sending my weight to, uh, to the cloud was useful for me, I, I, I really like to have that information now for two years because I know more about my body. Do I need to, I don't understand the need of doing the blood pressure thing. It, it feels to me like it's uh, like I need that if I go to a doctor or if I'm sick or something. So no. can you explain? I know you're not a doctor, but can you explain no, no, why? No. Is it does it does it actually have? Uh, is it should I use it if I'm sick or should I get one and do that as well? What, what, why should I do that? Uh, sure. I mean, first uh, I would advise you to check your blood pressure uh, before answering this this question because uh, you you might not know that you are in a, you know in a higher level. And uh, again, what's what's important uh, is to check from uh, to check your blood pressure from time to time, 
uh, record this value and detect some trends or some some values that are you know above uh, above average. But I like the fact you say the, is it useful to uh, share it on the cloud? Uh, I don't think that uh, you know it's a value to share it on the cloud. Uh, we are very much focused in the end-to-end -end experience at uh, at White Things, and so uh, in certain cases, you know, sharing your activity, uh, your runnings, your weight trends uh, towards a community community uh, is very useful because it will generate some pressure, social pressure to act, you know, to run uh, more often or to take charge of your of your weight. Uh, I don't believe it's the case for the blood pressure, uh, but I do believe it's very useful to share your blood pressure graphs with your doctors, for example. So I think the key point is... Uh, well, that's if I'm sick or if I need it, right? Because I, I actually don't... I probably see a doctor once yes. every year or something. But I, I think it's a question of, okay, what, what's the cost of taking the, the measure uh, and keep it? Uh, because at a certain point, you will have a lot of value having uh, this long history, uh, even when you do not feel uh, sick uh, mm. today, uh, spotting some correlation. So uh, I d I'm not speaking uh, for you, Aloy, but uh, if you start a diet because you're a bit overweight, uh, the first impact of uh, your diet might be uh, lowering your, your blood pressure that, that was a bit high. So ah. it's really useful to have this feedback loop uh, that will, you know, encourage you to go further and might, you know, be seen before uh, your weight loss, for example. I, uh, and so you do that every day yourself? Uh, so on, the, on the blood pressure, I do that a couple of three times a week. I do not do that uh, every morning. I okay. wait every morning. Uh, Sorry. No, we do not advise to take the blood pressure every day under you know every circumstances. Uh, we do think and uh, we uh, explain it on, uh, on our user interface that uh, taking it at the same in the same condition either on the mornings or a few times uh, during uh, the evenings, keeping the context will will provide uh, useful uh, information. Yes. Cool. I'll I'll try that. You've sold one today, at least. Uh, so we have friends who joined us. Anyone wants to try to? And did you want to do something, David, or are you just <laughs> picking up where we left off? I know I shouldn't. Uh, I shouldn't be uh, that dramatic. Go ahead. Go ahead, David. You drive. Well, well, just uh, for so we have a lot of people joining the hangout now. Welcome to everybody. If you have any questions, please feel free to hop in and ask them. Uh, while other people are are talking, we just ask that you keep yourself muted so that the video doesn't get jumpy all around. Wow, lots of people joining. Wow. All right. Well, uh, I guess we shared the right link as well, baby. <laughs> I guess this time the link worked. Um, does anybody have any questions? Yeah, can you introduce yourself? Anybody. <laughs> no, but go ahead, the person who just uh, raised his hand there. Can you introduce yourself and ask a question? <laughs> we so, can't hear you. Name, so maybe we can uh, name us. So it's, is it uh, Mikael? Yeah, I don't know if, if he can hear the us. The problem is that your mic seems to be muted. Um, uh, okay. Well, right. it would be nice if anyone from Google listens to this that they put a name behind. I think actually there is something to do that because David, we have to talk about this because uh, someone, we, I did this with a France Television Hangout and it worked very well. Anyway, anyone, try to ask a question. Go for it, Jason. If you have a question, hop in now. Hey, uh, can you guys hear me? Yep. Yes, Jason. Is awesome. So I'm kind of curious. I, can can I'm, you introduce yourself? I'm Sorry. Jason Enley. I'm the CEO for DisIQ. We're a new startup, and we're actually in the mHealth space. We're more of a collator of getting information, which I'd love to work with uh, why things I've looked at them for a long time. They're actually one of the companies that inspired me to start collecting this information. We're more on the social side. We're less interested in making hardware. You guys do it so well, why would I screw with that? Um, but I'm kind of curious, how hard would it be for me to get you guys to post our API? And are you open to doing that? Is that something that, that Why Things is presently doing? And why are you based, Jason, before Cedric answers? Uh, we're based in the US. I'm in Alabama, actually. Okay. Nice, thanks. Uh, first of all, uh, th thank you, Jason, uh, for the nice uh, comments on, uh, on, on what we, we are doing. Uh, about your questions, so I'm not sure I did understand. So I, I'm sure you are familiar, and maybe I just uh, 
uh, rephrase it because uh, some might not be. So we. So I'm we sure you are familiar, and maybe I just uh, uh, rephrase it because we are publishing. Uh, so our our API on a, on a Ysync website. So basically, we we think that uh, a lot of partners and guys like you can enrich the experience provide to our uh, product user uh, by taking the the data. So uh, from the API and always on the end user wheel. So as an end user of uh, a Ysync scale or blood pressure, I can uh, I can uh, set a link, a permanent link with a third party. Uh, uh, service provider or third-party apps, so uh, each time I will weigh in or take a measurement, this information will be available into these uh, third-party apps uh, or services. So from the very beginning, we make uh, uh, a core you know, feature on our product that this data will be uh, open and that the end user can choose uh, whether to share it uh, with uh, this or, or that uh, services. So uh, going back on your question, so be, can you uh, just precise? So I'm, I'm not sure I did understand your reference to another an API or what your question is. Sorry, exactly. You actually answered it perfectly. I'm reading your API right now. <laughs> oh, so you did not. Okay, so you did, you are not. So uh, it's published. It's on our website, and we very much favor uh, third parties to uh, read our API to uh, generate a, a token. And, a, and um, so you, I will not read what you have in, in front of you. Uh, but we uh, very much favor third party. We have now a range of more than 60 uh, apps developer or service providers that are linked uh, to our API, and it's going very fast. So I, I see posting to you what I'm curious about. I was, I'm was i reading the API right now. I'm sure that this would answer my question. But I'm curious about getting the device to post back to us. Is that something that presently supports? That's the, that's the first feature. Very first feature is that you uh, you are you connect uh, in order to let a Ysync user choose to push real time any new information generated by one of our devices. So you can uh, link to our API to retrieve information for a particular user. Awesome. Cool products. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thanks, thanks for this question because uh, so this API so sometimes it's, it's a bit technical. But for the end user, it means that uh, there is a range of uh, application interface service that like he can choose from. I, I will just name uh, you know a, a couple very different. We are we are connected to uh, the Runkeeper community, so uh, any user uh, comparing their their runnings can compare now some parameters, including one generated by uh, by Wi-Fi. So. So it arrives directly uh, within the, the Runkeeper community. But we're also connecting uh, to uh, big TV uh, manufacturers, such as uh, Samsung or, or Panasonic. So you can retrieve a family health dashboard directly on this TV. This is already uh, live uh, in the US, uh, again, going through our network or network platform. This API is a key part uh, for what I call the usefulness of our device. We do not believe that we can provide, you know, uh, uh, user experience that fits for everybody uh, around this uh, health uh, flow, and we need uh, the help uh, from you know, partners to bring a, a full feature experience. What, what is new? Uh, what we've updated uh, a couple of months ago is that uh, we updated our, our API so that we can now also import information from third parties and render it in our uh, own app. So uh, you might have downloaded the, the, our latest version from our app, which is called the Why Things a Health Companion on the iOS platform. And uh, actually, it's uh, today live uh, on the Google Play. And what you can uh, render in this application uh, includes data generated by the Why Things scale, by the blood pressure uh, monitor, but also from uh, activity monitors, such as the one from uh, Body Media, which is a, a long time uh, partner that I'm wearing uh, right uh, here on, uh, on my arms, and that uh, keep track of my uh, sleep information and activity information, and that I can get all in the same uh, within the Health Companion app. So it's going uh, two ways, Ex exporting and importing information. I have a question. Yeah, more question. Um, yeah, so I was curious, how, how do you go about deciding which product you guys will build next? Because I, I, I feel like obviously there's like an unlimited amount of opportunities here to connect devices with the internet in really unique ways. Um, how do you identify markets who have high demand for these kinds of products, and what's your process like? 
Uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a frequent question, not a, that's a simple answer. Well, we see uh, two trends. One is uh, connected wellness, and the other one is, uh, is, uh, is uh, e-health or connected health care services. Uh, so in our uh, product roadmap, um, we make sure that uh, we address uh, these two trends that for us are and will merge in, uh, in, one, uh, in one way and in, uh, in the future. Connected wellness is all device, you know, personal wellness devices that helps you understand more what you're doing, where you're going at in terms of your health, more in the wellness or preventive health uh, ways and more in uh, with, you know, auto uh, feedback loop. Connected health is uh, the technology that are deployed more and more by healthcare professional insurer <coughs> that enable them to provide better services because they know you better and because they get information uh, on your health, uh, on the long term again, and from your home premises, and not only from time to time when you go at the hospital. And we believe this, uh, these two worlds are separated today and will not be in the, in the future. So, of course, we have the example of the Wi-Fi body scale that, you know, almost sits at uh, every home. Blood pressure monitor, it is a, a health device. It's a FDA, uh, you know, approved uh, device. So it's a very different kind of device, but we believe that tomorrow it will not that be that different. So. You you would see uh, you will see in our in our roadmap uh, product from these two family or two categories, uh, but in our roadmap there are device but also uh, platform evolution feature and uh, and applications, and you will see some new new stuff uh, like the ones you're, we are releasing uh, the Wisin Health Companion we are releasing really today on the on the Google platform. There's a question here uh, from Miguel Rodriguez. Uh, the information to see on your TV, the wealth information, is asking if uh, this is available in Europe and a way to, he is looking into ways to integrate health products in his living. And I, by the way, I'm reading the chat room, so Cedric, if you press chat, you should see that as well. Uh, okay. It's on the top, top left button. If you hit chat, you should see me, Miguel, is trying to ask a question there. Uh, yes, so it, it is available. So it's uh, on um, you know any smart connected TV uh, range from the, the two manufacturers I uh, I mentioned. So it's it's available on uh, on both uh, on both platforms. So I believe uh, you, you're looking for a VR cast uh, enable uh, TV from uh, Panasonic and a smart TV uh, from from Samsung. But uh, uh, yes, it is uh, it is live uh, today, uh, and it is in the app. Uh, channels or app area of this uh, of this uh, TV, and it's going through a platform, so it does not uh, you know require a di direct link between the scale and the, and the TV. But obviously, these are going through the. the uh, yeah, Cedric, you wake up. Anyone question? Maybe I'll ask a question. My life. Can anybody hear me? Sure. Can you just introduce yourself and say where you are? If it's just cool. Sure. Uh, I'm Peter, and uh, I'm based in uh, Warsaw, Poland. Great. Uh, well, my question is: it might be a bit ignorant, but um, how many users do you guys have? Because we have a bunch of ideas uh, for apps uh, targeted at your scale, but uh, it would be nice to know how many uh, users do you guys have. Uh, so thanks for, for the question. We, we do not uh, answer to this question. We do not provide uh, our numbers. Oh, come on, Cedric, you don't. But here, you can do it just for us, right? Yes, I don't know exactly how many we are. No, so ser seriously, we do, not, um, we do not provide, you know, these absolute uh, quants. Um, I mean, for various reasons and, and competitive. I mean, some, it's some super of the, competitive, uh, your space. Huh? I, I, I'm amazed. Uh, I, can, can, you, can you, since you don't want to answer this one, can you just comment on your competition, which is always something tough to do as a CEO, I know, but there is Fitbit that has this, you know, little sensor, and they have now done their scale as well, and uh, there is these things that I'm wearing, which doesn't say anything about my weight, but the, the fuel band, you know, gives me information about, uh, about uh, XYZ information about my steps and so on. So, so how do you see the space in your competition? Because it looks like everybody is doing everything. Like those who are doing this are doing scales. You are doing scales and now you're doing more. Is, is there a, a white things Fitbit like device coming? Uh, so, I mean, so, so, sorry, uh, Luke, but I, 
we do not provide quants or our you know uh, roadmap information, but uh, and comments on the on the the competition. I think it's it's really a, a very very exciting ecosystem. So this has changed dramatically from the the day we started and when we introduced in 2009 uh, our body scale. Uh, the ecosystem is the one of device, application, and platforms that uh, enables to generate, capture, you know, transport health information, wellness provide some call uh, to action, uh, either from the application or because uh, you bring some social network or community uh, back to the, the application. So it has changed dramatically. Uh, as, a, as a matter of fact, when, when uh, at the beginning, uh, when we started the company and, uh, and we in fact revisiting some devices that you know, of course everybody know what's the body scale, we, we were quite, uh, you know, wondering who will be uh, our first competitor. Was it, uh, would it be the, the incumbent of the body scale or uh, new uh, new actors? And it seems that you know three years after uh, the, I mean the, the most uh, dynamic eco ecosystem is is really with very new actors. So I mean companies such as, as us who are uh, building from the very from day one uh, internet connected device uh, that who are taking care of the end to end experience by uh, saying that okay we are doing a hardware but we need uh, to choose the right uh, communication or connectivity uh, technology. We, we need to develop the application to provide a, a convincing uh, user experience. We need to open our data to bring a range of partners. So uh, again, this, uh, this ecosystem, uh, I think it's, it's very, very open on who will kind of lead the game tomorrow. And, and we really hope that uh, we can be a part of this, um, of this game tomorrow. So it's not a comment on specific competitors on ecosystem, and you know it's a word that will come back uh, more often because uh, we have partners uh, who are competitors uh, at the same time because we believe that uh, and it's it's mutual that it it benefits to everybody to open the data uh, to let everybody uh, build uh, the best uh, value proposition. Uh, that does not mean that we do not have uh, overstepping on a certain product on our, on our roadmap. But again, we think that uh, we are very, very, very beginning on a, on a huge market. All right, we have a question here from the YouTube comments uh, from Jan Rossi. Um, he asked, is your roadmap only focusing on health-related use cases, or are you planning broader range of home-connected devices? Well, we are pretty much uh, focused on you know, health, wellness, you know, fitness-oriented uh, devices and, and applications. All right. Um, you guys are asking some questions here. I know John said his video wasn't working, so I'll ask his question for him. Uh, do you have uh, do you have direct retail sales channels, or do you sell only over the web? If not, are you looking for multi-channel commerce? Yeah. So I, I think it's uh, so. Uh, thanks for asking or asking it again, uh, John. Uh, it's a, it's, a, it's a question uh, we already uh, discussed. Um, uh, so, so we are um, selling in, in various uh, channels. Uh, it's it's a bit sensible, you know, sensitive to explain exactly where we are, or where where we are negotiating. Uh, so where we are today, we are in uh, in such you know electronic retail retail such as the Apple stores in the U.S. in uh, in Best Buy uh, and more and more electronic focus or fitness focus uh, channels. I think the next stage, uh, and we don't know exactly when it's coming, is that. Uh, there will not be any non-connected scale at a certain time uh, or non-connected blood pressure monitor. So at a certain time, uh, these devices will go out of uh, really tech-oriented or new kind of shells, you know, back or into the traditional shells of, of the health, uh, health or fitness uh, devices. So we, for sure, uh, we are looking at, uh, at uh, extending our channels. But uh, I invite you to, to send uh, me a, an email uh, on this. That's really cool. So you, you talk a lot about like the future of this and how like everything's going to be connected. Um, it's kind of a broad question, but like what's what do you see like the world looking like in five to ten years in terms of how people are interacting with uh, 
you know, things on the internet. Is is it something, is there going to be like a point where like there's this revolution and everyone starts using these things in new ways? Or like how do you see the world in, in 10 years? Well, uh, so I, I don't know, I mean, if I can provide a, a short answer on that, but I, I, I'm a true believer that, uh, you know, stronger innovation are not the ones that are the most visible at, uh, at the very beginning. So I do believe, uh, and you just uh, you know, rebound on, on my remark on, on the scale, I, I do believe that at a certain time, um, uh, scale or any health sensors will be connected because it's so obvious that it brings more values and that there is, again, no value in taking a snapshot on your health, but you need to uh, make the movie of your health and, and understand and inspire you or uh, provide hard data for the one who are the caregivers. But it's, it's obvious that uh, this wave of connectivity will be uh, uh, absolutely, uh, you know, over all kind of you know, health, wellness, uh, and wellness sensors. So, I mean, for me, that's obvious. I don't know when, when it will happen. Uh, but uh, so in the Internet of Things, uh, I think we will uh, forget, uh, I mean, at a certain point, certain point, we will forget this expression of Internet of Things. Things uh, are, are uh, connected because, uh, again, they provide a bit of information that is not useful at the point of capture, but it's useful to be rendered at another time, at another place, or sent to another, another person. So we are pretty much, you know, again, focused on, on the feature, on the end user experience, more than on the technology itself. That's cool. Do you think that there's a risk in kind of putting all this reliance on platforms that are controlled by other companies. For example, like if everything's controlled by, you know, people's iPhones, but then, uh, you know, Apple controls so much power with that. And we've seen how they've treated some other, you know, apps or companies like, like Google Maps. Now they switch it to Apple Maps. And so they have control over how they want to connect things. Um, do you see that as a risk for your company or for this Internet of Things industry as a whole? Uh, so it's, uh, I mean, we are managing uh, very sensible information, private information, health-related uh, information, so we are very serious about that. Uh, first, uh, your data belongs to you. So, uh, of course, uh, for ease of experience, uh, we are backing up the information. We enable uh, for you to render, render it on your favorite uh, you know, mobile device. And all that comes uh, with the fact that we have a platform. We, enabling, uh, we are enabling a lot of services for our platform. The data belongs to you. The, the general term of usage are very clear. Uh, if you uh, want to stop using our interface, then uh, you are almost automatically get uh, an email with your data. You do not have, you know, to send us a letter to claim uh, for for your data. And, and we believe that, to be honest, uh, it has to be easy, you know, to retrieve your your information. So you know this uh, this idea of uh, of one. Uh, Actors or one company controlling, uh, I think it's always a bit uh, a bit scary. So we need to uh, find the good trade-off between ease of use and and, um, and and control because you know it's easy to say uh, okay the, the information can be shared or uh, to do a connectable device. Uh, I, I could uh, you know market uh, uh, scale with Bluetooth or Wi-Fi and stop here and say, uh, but we we do think that it will be a connectable device with falling very short of providing uh, the, the, the full end-to-end -end experience. So we need to uh, take care of part of the, of the flow, uh, but that means that the data is uh, recorded at a certain point on the, on, the, on the cloud or on platform. Very cool. Um, we only have a few more minutes here, um, but I know there's a lot of entrepreneurs uh, watching or in the Hangout. Um, can you share some advice for these entrepreneurs? Can you talk about maybe one mistake that you guys have made and how you overcame that and what you learned from it? Uh, so I, I really don't like to, to give advice. I think people will, I mean, the only advice I, I, I like to give is that uh, there are much more ideas out there than, than acts and, and uh, we, we should not uh, feel afraid of uh, having the ideas are floating around, so uh, the, the work belongs to the one who acts and, and does it and executes. So first is the exec execute, uh, for sure. Uh, and maybe one thing in our experience that um, uh, participate to our position today is that we do not try to do everything. 
and uh, hence we focus on this uh, API and, and platform from the very beginning, uh, you know, choosing from the very beginning, okay, do we want to be uh, uh, the Weight Watchers with a uh, weight, you know, connected scale, or do we want to enable to the, all the nice, you know, Weight Watchers-like services that are out there? And uh, the second option seems um, was, you know, part of uh, uh, what we are today. Okay, so Cedric, there is someone, someone in the chat who is asking uh, if you are open to other devices. That's Michael. Are you yes. open to, like, if I create a, a, a let's say, Zio, the sleep thing, right, uh, wants to connect to your platform, is it possible? Yeah, so thank you. Thanks. Because it is done, so... Um, Yes, uh, Zio, so sleep sensors, uh, is already connected to our platform, meaning that if you wear Zio sleep sensors, you can have all your information in our, on, on your Whitelink app. So you just link it, uh, inbound flow from Zio to, uh, to Whitelink. You can do it with a couple of uh, third-party sensors. Uh, and yes, we are open um, because we think that uh, uh, the correlation of the information uh, between you know weight activity health heart uh, uh, health and, and sleep activity uh, is useful so we wanted to to render it in our app and so we are not close in uh, in the fact uh, or limited to our own hardware we we want to provide the best uh, user experience so today's zero body media information is automatically uh, linked to our apps I invite you to check on the on the writing uh, health companion on, on iOS and or Android to, to check that. Sweet. Um, well, so we're right about at the 45-minute mark now, so we're going to wrap it up. Uh, thanks to everybody who joined the Hangout and asked questions. Too short. It's too short. <laughs> <laughs> I, I see uh, so many people uh, here uh, on, the, on the line. So it's very, very do you short. Have, do you have five or ten more minutes, Cedric, or we should stop? I have uh, all the time you, you need. Uh, very time. <laughs> you, David, you have five more minutes? I, I have all the time you need as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's take a few more questions then, and then we'll let, uh, let, go, uh, let go Cedric. But this is so fascinating, and by the way, we'll have a lot of amazing guests like this all on the Internet of Things topic, which is uh, absolutely in incredibly uh, interesting. So anyone has a question for Cedric? I have a question. Go ahead. Can you introduce yourself and uh, say where you are? Uh, my name is Ernest Ramirez, and I'm in San Diego, California. Um, I have a question. Uh, it seems that uh, Why Things is, has done a really good job of capturing the younger and middle-aged adult market and now moving into children, baby monitoring. Um, obviously, here in the United States worldwide, we're getting older as a population. Do you see Why Things being used by older adults? And if so, how or how are you going to address kind of that community of users? Yeah, uh, so um, we are we are convinced that it will uh, bring a, a, a lot of services for for all, uh, elder adults. I think as as a company, it is it has not been you know the, the shortest path to to market. There, there are some some barriers that uh, that uh, make it uh, not the obvious one as a, as a first step. But we we get so many requests every day. So. Uh, we, our third device is a baby monitor. Uh, it removes the barrier from uh, local connectivity to a remote connectivity. So the receiver of it is an iPhone or Android. So you can monitor all the activity. So not only monitor real time, but you have a log of uh, motion activity and envir environmental uh, data at, at home. Obviously, that's a device that uh, can be helpful to a remote elderly, uh, your, your parents, and, and keep a, a link and a constant link uh, with them. That's just an example. Uh, there are many uh, very specific features we can add on scale, so it can be very interesting for aging uh, population. Uh, and of course, yes, we are, we are working on that. And so I, I say that we are focused on wellness and health. Uh, we are not focused on a specific uh, range of uh, age. So th thanks for asking. Next step, and uh, we are introducing this uh, baby uh, and toddler scale so that enables you know to check on your baby uh, nutrition uh, at the very beginning uh, first months but also uh, to educate your child so up to uh, uh, a few years on you know the feedback you know and the, the loop you have between your activity uh, the way you eat and the, and the way you train and we think it's a very important step uh, but yes uh, the, the aging population is um, 
is something that uh, I mean is it will benefit from this technology for sure. Other question? Louis, do you have a question? Uh, you're breaking up, uh, David. What did you say? As if you had a question. Oh, I always have questions. You know, I can go on and on. Yeah, how do you get a product reference at the Apple Store? That, that's a big one. Yeah, that's a <laughs> when I saw your product at the Apple Store in San Francisco, I was like, wow. <laughs> yes, me too. I was, uh, I was uh, <laughs> very happy with that. Uh, we are, we are uh, present in, uh, I mean, basically in, uh, in Apple Store in North America and uh, almost all of them in, uh, in, uh, in Europe and including in, uh, also in Asia, in Japan, Australia. So it's, it's a big network, uh, very um, uh, efficient uh, stores, as everybody, uh, everybody knows. And uh, so we have been very happy to be uh, features and more than features sold in, uh, in these stores. You know, the, the process, uh, it's a retail business. It's called Apple Retail. So it's a retail business with, you know, not that different process of product selection and uh, negotiation and finding the right conditions for everybody. So it's, uh, I, you know, you have to have the right product at the, the right price at the right moment. And we're happy we, we did. And uh, it seems that uh, so after our first product, Apple did uh, reference our second and our third. So we are really enjoying uh, our range of product in this uh, in this network, so we're very happy with that. Uh, there is no secret, uh, no secret uh, recipe, you know, uh, for people who are doing hardware uh, here today, um, uh, other than uh, try to get the, the, the buyer uh, first the product. Uh, um, there is a John in the chat room who is asking, what is your biggest supply chain or, or manufacturing challenge? Uh, so it's uh, there are many 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 challenges. I mean, uh, doing hardware is not uh, uh, there are no very uh, much or many uh, calm uh, days. Uh, everything happens uh, every day. Uh, we are designing all our product here in France. Uh, most of our manufacturing is is done, and that's not a secret in in uh, in, uh, in China. And uh, so we we do have a supply chain to Europe to uh, to US. Um, I don't know if it's to cope with uh, all the risk, all the compliance. We are a small company, but we went global very quickly with uh, with hardware. So we have to cope with you know all regulation, authorization to go to the market. Uh, when you do a medical device, it's even uh, uh, stronger because you have FDA and FDA, FDA like in uh, every different country. So it brings a lot of constraint on your on your supply chain. But so I will not. Uh, I, you know, go in all the details on all the difficulties we have every day to uh, to, su to supply chain. Maybe I just uh, mention one particularity of doing a, a connected device uh, and managing a supply chain, because uh, having a device that is connected change a bit uh, your supply chain, because you are able to customize your device uh, at the point of consumption. Meaning that uh, I'll take an example of uh, doing a Wi-Fi device. Uh, when you do Wi-Fi. You have regulation that makes you, uh, you know, have to set your Wi-Fi uh, channels differently when you are in Israel or in France or in the U.S. Um, when it's connected, when the device is connected, you can comply with this uh, regulation right at the moment when the user installs it. So if uh, a user take a, one of our products is and install it in Israel, we are turning off certain channels that enable us. Uh, not to have several reference, uh, which is, a, you know, the more you have a different reference with your hardware, the more the supply chain is a, is a headache. And I, can, I could give you a, a lot of examples that really show that uh, being able to adapt the product, not at the point of production, but at the point of consumption, really revolutionize your, your supply chain. Great. Any other question? I guess we should really let... Uh Cedric, uh, Cedric, go if, if there is not another one. Any, any, anyone else? Okay, so I want to mention that Cedric has uh, helped me. The, the, the web uh, program is a work in progress, as you know, for December 4 and 5, 6. And obviously, Cedric is on stage and he's introduced me to more uh, 
incredible speakers um, that I invited. So check out the Le Web Paris program at paris.leweb.co, and we will get them all uh, on Hangouts at least once a week, and we will publish a, a program of the Hangouts soon. Um, so feel free to join us, and also you know recommend more speakers to us. Cédric, you rock! Congratulations. Um, I'm um, I'm really happy for you uh, of all your uh, success, David. Uh, did you want to have some uh, final words? Um, no, I think you covered everything. I guess just real quick, uh, the this whole video will be available on our YouTube page at youtube.com/theweb, so you can watch this entire interview um, as well as all the interviews that we did for London and all the interviews that we'll be doing here for Paris. Um, also, we have our Facebook group for the Low Web community. Just go on Facebook and search Low Web community, um, and you can join in all these kinds of conversations all day, every day. Um, and you will have Cedric, of course, on stage at uh, at the Web. With uh, I think pretty much the whole ecosystem will be there. It will be fun. Cedric, thanks so much, and everybody for joining. Well, thanks, thanks a lot, uh, Loic, for for today, and of course for the invitation at uh, at the web. I'm, I really look forward to see these uh, uh, crazy people you invited uh, along, and uh, and uh, that will be, a, I think, nice exchange uh, on the Internet of Things. So I look forward to be December uh, with you. I, I, I'm um, I, I'm having a blast with the theme. I I think I never had such a blast with the theme because I'm bombarded by emails of people telling me you should look at this and that and read this book and it, it's it's fascinating. And you're a big player in that. Thanks so much, Cedric. Thank you very much. Thanks uh, everybody. Bye bye. All right. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Bye bye.